What is going on guys and girls? My name is James and welcome back today to Roblox. How are we doing everybody? Welcome back, welcome back. Today, of course, we are back for some brand new B-Swarm. And I think this episode is going to be the final one inside the test realm before Beesmus 2020 comes out. So, we're going to talk a few Beesmus things in just a second. But, I also have something a little bit different for you guys today. Because, today we are going to check out what, on it, the creator of B-Swarm Simulator's beehive actually looks like so i've always kind of wondered you know what kind of bees does he use what does his hive look like and there's also one really really interesting thing about on its hive that none of us actually have <laughs> he's got something special no one else has it Today, we're going to take a look. So, three, two, one, claim the hive. Yeah, how are we all? It is Christmas Eve. Um, I think it's Christmas Day in Australia. So, 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 good eye, mates. Uh, happy Christmas to all you Australians out there. It's still Christmas Eve on this side of the world. And, uh, yeah, I think right now... <laughs> this is kind of a strange episode to make because, to be honest, myself, like everybody else, right now we're simply just waiting for Beesmus to come out. So, we've kind of talked about this in the previous couple of episodes, but from what it's looking like, it's either going to come out very late tonight, which is probably going to be like midnight onwards, 1, 2 a.m. for UK people, probably in the evening for Americans, or it might just come out on Christmas Day. So, I don't know, man, like... Out of those two, I kind of now prefer it to come out on Christmas Day. But at the same time, like, if you American lot can go play it a little bit earlier, then why not, right? <laughs> Whenever it comes out, that's fine. But I'm pretty much just waiting like everybody else. I'm just sitting here like, come on, on it. Do it. Do it. We want Beesmus. <laughs> I'll wait is nearly over. Our wait is nearly over. It's nearly done. So, uh, yeah, we're not going to do any light goal in this episode. This is kind of like, ooh, Vicious Bee has been taken down. Oh dear. Uh, yeah, this is like sort of kind of like an intermediate episode because we don't really know what's going to happen. You know, we're kind of just all waiting for Beesmus. So yeah, no light goal in this one. If you would like to, that would be awesome. Uh, but yeah, the one thing that I would like to ask you guys is, uh, of course, when a Beesmus update comes out, uh, there's a bunch of the Robux packs that pop up on the game. Um, and yeah, so if any of you guys are going to be grabbing some Robux to purchase those packs, or if you're going to get some Robux for Christmas, or if you're going to, you know, get yourself a premium membership and stuff, uh, if you would kindly consider using my roblox star code which is thanksia uh, that would be absolutely incredible so in case you've never used it before very quickly basically you just type it into the support a creator slot mine is thanksia you click it doesn't cost you any extra money whatsoever but it does directly support the channel the beast swarm content and myself and it's just incredibly helpful so yeah if you do choose to use that over the business 2020 that would be amazing if you want to let me know and send me a tweet on twitter i would love to say thank you to you if you just want to use it and don't let me know then that's completely fine as well but if you are one of those people i'll thank you in advance thank you very much i really appreciate it so yeah i'll mention like the star code stuff in another episode at some point but yeah that would be really really awesome but anyway <laughs> Today, we've got something a little bit different. So, uh, all of these images here today are courtesy, of course, of good old Beast Form Simulator leaks. Thank you very much, as per usual. And, uh, yeah, what he's got here is, I don't know who, like, initially took these, but this is um, from when on it was in the test realm testing out some stuff. So, the unfortunate thing about that is that on it always tends to test stuff at, like, 3, 4, 5 in the morning for me. So, I haven't actually managed to, like, be on a server with on it or anything like that. But, but um, yeah, he does occasionally jump into the test server and just maybe test out some things. So we are going to look at his beehive to begin with. We've got a few bees and stuff as well that I want to talk about. This is what his beehive looks like. And all of his bees are level four. And do you, know, do you know what amuses me about that? All the rest of us, right, are just standing in front of our beehive and then, you know, we're taking our treats and then we're having to feed our bees and they're going up levels one by one by one by one and it takes a really, really long time. And on it was just like, nah, <laughs> nah you're all right. I'm going to leave them at level four <laughs> because why not, right? <laughs> so, yeah, this is on its hive. Like, he has 100 level four bees. Now, he has, like, what is that, seven lion bees at the top, which is kind of odd. But just looking at the hive, he pretty much just has, like, one of everything. Now, <laughs> the reason why I wanted to bring this up, and I thought this was so interesting, is if you zoom in to his hive, there is one bee in here which doesn't fit with the others. And it looks a little bit like this. This is a little happy green face. 
but because it's green color, it would kind of mean that it's an event bee, right? But there's no event bee that looks like that. Oh, look! <laughs> Someone's called their cub buddy James! Oh, that's so sweet. Thank you very much, my bear friend. Um, yeah. <laughs> so basically, like, there's a mystery bee, which only Onir has, and it's an event green style bee. What could that possibly be? Well, this is, I'm pretty certain of it anyway, the digital bee from the Ready Player 2 event. So, of course, this was like an NPC bee uh, that we saw in the game. It was behind this panel here, and obviously when the Ready Player 2 event was triggered, that that digital bee did go into the fields and you had to follow its face and do certain patterns. So the weird thing is, like, I think I said this, when we did the Ready Player 2 event, like, video, we completed it all and all we got was, like, a star jelly and a badge. And I was like, but what about this bee? This is, like, the coolest bee ever. Why are we not getting this? And it seems like Onnit has actually added it as an equipable bee which you can have in your hive. Now, the thing is... <laughs> I don't think it's probably game ready. And are we ever going to get the digital bee? Maybe not. But it's pretty cool to know that Onnit actually did make it into a bee which flies around in your hive. <laughs> and currently he is the only one that actually has it. Now, I was kind of thinking about this and I was like, wouldn't it have been so cool if Onnit like did the Ready Player 2 stuff and then like a week or two after, or maybe when the event was finished, he did like a second event for this digital bee to be in the game. Because it looked so, so cool. It had like an animated face panel. And in terms of event bees, it's actually been quite a long time since we've had a brand new event bee. Like, off the top of my head, I can't remember the last event bee that we had. Wouldn't it have been... Uh... Yeah, because we had like a bunch of mythics, didn't we? But we haven't had an event bee for so long. I think the last one that we had... Jeez, what was it? Uh... Was it the festive bee? No way. Festive bee? It might have been, you know, but the Festive Bee is like, what, two and a bit years old? Wait, was there a bee after the Festive? I don't think so. Dude. Or was it Vicious? It's either Vicious or Festive. I'm not too sure which one. But <laughs> it just goes to show you, like, how long ago the ex an exclusive bee was put into the game. Not just a mythic, not something that you can get, like, with Royal Jelly, but something that you actually have to do a quest for. Can we have the digital bee at some point? Maybe in, like, January or February? That would be so cool. I was thinking it could just be, like, it literally could reuse the Ready Player 2 stuff. So what if the digital bee had, like, a, a technique where, like, when it triggered its ability, it had, like, those letters in the field, and the letters just collected all of the pollen where the letters fell? That would be cool. <laughs> can we have it on it? <laughs> Please? See, so yeah, also, another little fun fact about Onnit's Hive. Um, you see here, like, he's on the leaderboard in the test realm. He has, like, this crazy, like, 10 trillion honey or whatever. Apparently, I don't think I have a screenshot of this, but Onnit did say that he actually has the only honey hammer in the game. So the honey hammer, I think, was, like, an item. I'll put a picture up that was tested a long, long, long time ago. It was supposed to be, like, an end game collector, the end game collector, and it never has come out to the public. So despite what people say and stuff, only Onnit has this item and apparently one single swing in a field with his honey hammer collected this much pollen <laughs> one swing <laughs> like 10 trillion bang so yeah he's only got the honey hammer and he's got the digital v and he's got 100 bees in his hive i mean that's fair right he did make the game so, other stuff that we can talk about here, as I kind of mentioned, like, this is a weird episode to make because we're sort of in this limbo period between not knowing when the update's coming out and just, like, casually waiting here. Um, so, one, like, a little change, I guess, that Onnit has made, well, it's actually a pretty cool change, is we looked at this yesterday, which is the Bee Bears catalog. Now, he's made a couple of changes to the items. Firstly, the Gingerbread Cub Buddy uh, bundle is now in the game, and this will cost 200 50 gingerbread bears so this is an exclusive limited edition gingerbread cub buddy skin which you will only be able to get at beesmas 2020 and it costs gingerbread bears uh the other change that he has made i think he added in these field dice booster bundles and he swapped out the one which had the magic beans so the uh the festive beans even because the festive beans are like the most abused item in bee swarm simulator history you had people who bought like 
uh, beans on like 100 accounts and stuff like with real money to like boost up their stats on the leaderboard and it was a big old mess we've talked about that like <laughs> historically on the channel many times so that bundle has been replaced with this booster bundle which just gives us some field dice and some glue and stuff like that um so apart from that, oh yeah, there's another present in here. So this is a present that you give to the NPCs. And of course, if you guys remember the Beesmus 2019, you have to give presents to the NPCs. And in return, they will give you an ornament, which will stick on the tree. And then that ornament will give you a permanent boost for the entirety of Beesmus 2020. So it's kind of all Beesmuses wrapped into one, including new content. So yeah, let, let, let me talk about this. So based off all the things that Onnit has said, now I don't know if we'll be getting all of these in that first update like later today or tomorrow, but essentially there's like so many different things that you can do. So one is the Beesmus tree. So this is triggered by the presence and the presence you'll be able to get in and around the map for doing certain things. Secondly, you have the NPCs with their unique ability boosts, which are things like the wreaths and the gingerbread houses and the stockings and the snow bear, which is another thing that the NPCs will be involved in and then thirdly on it did say that there will be presence and stuff in and around the map as well now i don't know if it will be the same ones that we had last year where you like had to do a certain amount of quests to activate them but we probably will get that at some point maybe pretty soon and it's going to be cool because it gave us loads of free stuff last time and some really really good rewards i think including mythic eggs yeah just to kind of like finish up on this little shop area the bee bears catalog this is what the gingerbread cup buddy <laughs> is gonna look like in the main game he's really cute with his little white snowy ear pieces <laughs> i like him a lot so yeah i don't think i'm gonna use this cub buddy we're definitely gonna like um get it because it's a limited edition one um but i i'm very attached to dupes in the main game dupes has been there for the longest time and i am very very attached to my cub buddy but i'm definitely gonna get this skin because why not right uh, and this is the little um Oh, we can feast. Oh, ready, 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 ready. Three, two, one. Feast on the beast. Yes. Lovely stuff. So, yeah, I don't really think I have an awful lot left to mention in this episode. You know, it's kind of a case of on it has obviously been testing this for the past week or so and we've done pretty well with keeping up to date with everything that he has done now of course uh, there's going to be so many uh Beesmus episodes going up uh on the channel over the next week or two so if you're not yet subscribed make sure that you do subscribe and hit that bell and stuff so that you don't miss out on any uploads i'm going to try and bring you just as much useful information and we're going to have a lot of fun with it as well which i think is important uh and yeah i suppose the next time you hear from me, Beesmus 2020 will officially be released. <laughs> so that's going to be awesome. Um, but yeah, so I don't know when that's going to be. But in advance, happy Christmas, everybody. I hope you have a lovely day. I will see you very, very soon for some Beesmus 2020 hype. And until then, thanks. <laughs> and see you.